What up, watch peeps? Do you guys break up your collection into sub collections? Like for me, I have my Vostoks. I used to have a bunch, I'm down to only like five now. Then I have like my Digitals and Quartz that has like G-Shocks, uh, World Timers, that Armatron, stuff like that. Then I have my Overflow, that's just like mods, stuff that's on the chopping block, maybe stuff I bought to review but don't plan on keeping. But lastly, I have my Core Collection. Now the goal of my core collection has been a bit of a moving target, always evolving, but lately what I've been trying to do is collect iconic watches, iconic looking watches that I also really like, affordable icons at that, which is a lot harder to do than you might think. So just recently I've picked up the Longines Legend Diver to add to that lot. Really cool watch, so let's take a look. I'm Pete and we are Chillin' With Watches. First things first, wrist check. I am just rocking the SKX007. Uh, I've been falling in love with this watch all over again. I'm wearing this recently. This is the Warrington bracelet from uh, Watch Gecko, I think. Gekota. So, <laughs> first thing about this thing, this box is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look how big this is. So, let's tear into here. This is definitely the biggest box. I can't even fit it all on camera. I mean, this is a serious thing here like you can hear it it's actually hitting the leg of my tripod there so it doesn't fit that is an enormous box for a watch and here is the gorgeous legend diver but <laughs> to finish looking at this box real quick let's set this aside for one second so i'm going to hold this up so you can see it's got this pretty cool placard here i don't know if you can read it. it's very shiny of the Longines Legend Diver. And you know, you can lift this up and in here is uh, an encyclopedia. I have no idea what this was is. I never looked at it, but it's a ginormous book. And I have a couple extra links from the bracelet, which we can take a quick look at real quick because it comes with a really cool mesh bracelet. Sorry if it's a smudge. Um, really fine. This is a very, very shiny, blingy kind of uh, mesh bracelet. It does look cool on it, and you may have seen me post pictures of it on Instagram. I do not wear it much with this bracelet. It's just not super my style, and I think it over-exaggerates some of the polish on the watch, but a uh, pretty nice bracelet nonetheless. But lastly, underneath all that giant contraption, there is a drawer under here with Encyclopedia Volume 2. This, I think, actually might even be thicker. Look, this is a, a three-hand watch with a date complication. What in the world could be in here? I'm not reading it to find out, but pretty funny nonetheless. All right, let's get this out of the way. All right, these two. So, taking a closer look at the Legend Divers, obviously a compressor case. Um, thing I like about this watch is its versatility. I think it's both sporty and elegant at the same time. Like I mentioned before, a lot of polished surfaces which make it kind of dressy. Now I know the faux tina or faux aged patina may be divisive. I don't think it's very extreme on this watch. It's not even that orangey tan color. It's more like a creamy yellow, like, like C3, which I think is really just very attractive loom. I don't think this is actually C3, but it has that kind of creamy color to it. Um, I don't think of it as being trying to be something it's not. To me, it's just black and tan or black and cream. It's just a color palette, and I think it just looks really good together. Taking a closer look at the dial, I mean, this is a pretty busy dial, I think without being crowded. I, I love all the lines on it. I think that just gives it something to look at, makes it a little more interesting. This is the date version you'll see over here at three o'clock. There is a no date. I am mostly preferential to no date watches, but um, the date here on this one doesn't bother me at all. Now you guys know how I love 369 or 36912 dials. So this also falls into that realm. The handset on this watch, similar to what you find on my Ranger. Again, something I really like with the arrow. Really cool handset. Again, also iconic. You look at these, you know these are Longines Legend Diver hands. 
So this is not a small watch at 42 millimeters. I wouldn't call it large, but it's not small. But if we look at it in profile, you'll see the lugs have a really nice turn down to them. And for me, that really works out. It ends up being very wearable. That will depend on your wrist shape. Looking at the other side, you'll see it is dual crown and compressors always have this cross hatching on their crowns. I don't know what that represents, but the uh, top crown both screw down the top screw down crown and you'll see it is spring loaded there that is for the inner rotating bezel all very smooth but what this has is you can line it up and then when you press it in it disengages so you can screw it down without disrupting your setting of the internal bezel bottom crown is just for the time setting action on both crowns is really nice i think i believe this is a eta 2824 Taking a look at the case back, it has a really cool case back with the uh, diver on it there. Longines Legend Diver. So I think this watch fits into my collection really well. It's one of those watches that's just extremely recognizable, but it's also very versatile. On that mesh that it came on, I think it kind of plays into the dressier side. But if you were to put it on, say, like a Tropic strap, it becomes very sporty. And I have it on this Uncle Seiko bracelet that I think kind of strikes a nice balance between the two. Sporty, dressy kind of every day. This is like a polished Outer Lynx beads of rice. The, uh, the beads are brushed and the Outer Lynx are polished. Very cool bracelet from Uncle Seiko. Milled clasp, two button, safety fold over just really solid and i think this watch looks great on it so let's take a look at it on the time graph or see how it's running so just look at the performance on that thing plus one plus two zero so it is hovering right around accurate maybe a second or two fast per day really nice amplitude at 274 almost no beat error and you can't ask for much more than that Going over the dimensions of the watch, I mentioned before it is a 42 millimeter case. Now that lug to lug I was talking about is 52 millimeters, so not too <laughs> short. And if it wasn't for that turn down, this would be borderline unwearable unless you had a really large wrist. 12.4 uh, millimeters thick, 22 millimeter lug width. Going over some of the other specs on the watch, it has a really pretty box sapphire crystal. You can see that sits around. It's obviously a double dome sapphire. There's no distortion at oblique angles. But yeah, a really pretty sapphire crystal. Uh, it has Swiss Super Luminova. And I mentioned before it's running a 2824. It's not exactly true. The movement is based on the 2824, but what it has is the Longines L888 caliber movement which is, like I said, a 2A24, but uh, scaled down to run at 25,200 beats per hour, which extends the power reserve to 65 hours. And it has a whopping 300 meters of water resistance. And on this Uncle Seiko beads of rice sized for my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it comes in at a very reasonable 143 grams. Uh, putting it on wrist so you can see how it wears again seven and a quarter inch wrist you can see not bad there's no overhang i think it wears just fine for me but if you take a look at it in profile see it just hugs the wrist it's really quite thin but not too thin so you don't get that dinner plate effect but you know close enough to hug the wrist and really spread the weight of this watch out but not heavy either at 143 so it wears really well Let's take a look at it side by side some other watches. Let's do it backwards here today and take a look at it with the SKX first since I had that on my wrist earlier. Now the SKX also a 42 and a half or so millimeter watch. So very similar overall dimensions. And I mean, if you look at that inner rotating bezel as a bezel, you kind of get a similar presentation, right? Obviously you got longer lugs on the Legend but it is a thinner, neater package in profile. A larger diver like the Turtle, which is 44 millimeters. You can see, I think the Turtle with those lugs kind of presents a little larger than the Longines, but dial size, not off by a ton. 
And to look at it with another bezel-less watch, the uh, Tudor Ranger, which is 41, so one millimeter smaller than the Legend. And I think that all dial with less, it's less busy, so it looks bigger than the 42 millimeter Longines. All the activity in the dial kind of makes it present itself as smaller. And let's take a look at that loom. Keep the loom. And so you can see there's not a ton of loom on this watch. A lot of what you look at as the Fotina is actually just like a creamy colored paint. There's only the dots around the indices and that triangle you see at the top is on the inner rotating bezel. But the loom it does have is plenty bright and very visible in low light. So there it is, the Longines Legend Diver. Here you can see how it wears on my wrist from a little further away. And I think it wears great on my size wrist. And this is quickly becoming one of my favorite watches, right up there with the Doxa and the uh, Tudor Ranger. Let me know what you guys think. Share your thoughts in the comments. Before I let you go, sneaker check. Just wearing my blacked out Jordan 1 Lowe's. All right, that's it. I am out. It's not too much trouble. Like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.